Hey, y'all. Let me just uh, check where Paris and Josh are at. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. I think people are still, the Knative community meeting is just wrapping up and it was, it's definitely a bring your popcorn sort of event. Aha, uh -huh. I see. Just wondering. Yeah, so Chris, Chris Debona answering questions about the OUC for the Knative community. Oh, now I should have, move my schedule around for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i i moved some stuff around to accommodate that meeting but it's recorded so you can watch it later cool cool awesome it's interesting i realize i don't have host powers here but well, Paris said she's on her way. I saw Josh in the community meeting. April was in the community meeting. Okay, cool. So I'm assuming that it sounded like they're wrapping it up. So I, I dropped off. Maybe gotcha. I might be missing something really fantastic. Who knows? <laughs> All right. So for those who are here, um, can I just drop the meeting notes in the chat? And feel free to put your names down as attendees and any um, any topics you might want to discuss there. Hey everybody, just wanted to introduce myself. I'm. Uh... A, uh, a VMware employee, uh, but I work mostly on the build packs project. So I was, I saw that I saw the the blog post this week, and I was like, oh, it seems pretty cool. And I wanted to uh, awesome. See what's happening with. Uh, we got VMware represent in yeah. this meeting. <laughs> I'm also VMware. I believe Stephen is also VMware. I am also VMware. Yeah. Hey. Well, Hello. welcome to the meeting, Carolyn. Do you feel left out because you're not VMware? Oh, no. <laughs> I live my life company free. I just think about my friends. So, you know, my friends. Hey, April. So, build packs, are you mappy you as well? Yeah, map you. Okay, cool. We are. Uh, so yeah. I'm on the. Uh, so Don is on the OSPO side, and I'm on the um, the TKG core like test and release work stream. So like release engineering for TKG. Cool. But then also just general CNCF stuff from what I've seen. Yeah, I get around a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> So fill some some air time. How's everyone's uh, week? By two weeks, month, year, long, everything going. <laughs> I had so much fun yesterday watching Twitter implode. <laughs> so they, it sounds like they determined it was a social engineering thing with uh, Twitter employees. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. That's got to be fun. So did anybody get doubled Bitcoin? <laughs> <laughs> I 
Oh, April, did you, were you on Twitter last night or? No, oh, okay. Yeah, so um, someone socially engineered a Twitter, um, like SRE or somebody, someone who had access to like the admin plant panel and they were able to get into the accounts of all the major verified Twitter users and accounts so like Barack Obama, Biden, Elon oh, Musk, God. Apple, um, I don't know, like a whole bunch. And they posted a cryptocurrency link and told people to like donate and then that high profile person would match it um, and acted like it was a thing for charity. Uh, and a lot of people did as like a scam. Wow. Um, and then so the people who had the accounts were trying to like delete the um, tweets and make it go away. And I think they were getting locked out and the emails were getting switched to something else. Um, I don't know. And so instead of t shutting down Twitter, they just locked all the verified people out of their accounts so they could retweet, but they couldn't tweet original tweets. Um, and so they were trying to communicate simply through retweets, which was hilarious. So the unverifieds uh, had a blast last night. So it, it, yeah, that's a, uh, can y'all hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, good. Yeah, I, I like, um, I've decided for my mental health, I need to take some time off of Twitter because I tend to wake up, look at Twitter and think like, God, the world is terrible. Um, and so I missed all the good stuff, apparently. That's kind of amazing. <laughs> I really feel bad for the SRE, my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel sorry for whoever uh, got fished or whatever really happened. Yeah. yeah, but it's fascinating. I'd love to, like, you know, I'm sure, I don't know that they'll make it public, but, like, I'd love to hear, like, how it happened because that's, that's a big one. That's kind of fascinating. Like, we're we're gonna we're gonna need a, a postmortem on that one for sure. Like that, oh, yeah. Twitter's not gonna give you a postmortem. I'll tell you that. <laughs> I, re, re, redacted. They gotta they gotta give something for for. Here's uh, how you can break into all of our stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, more so like here's how we mitigated that, right? Like I don't care exactly how uh, how it happened, but. Yeah, yes. I'm just fascinated by the whole, you know the whole thing so yeah i would hope that if it happened once it shouldn't happen again but it's not always the strongest hope computers right <laughs> they find a way security is a thing that's easy right <laughs> hey paris hey karen sorry y'all i had a call that would just not end and i could not end it i apologize uh <laughs> um do we know if josh is popping on too uh, if we haven't heard from him it's probably you know all right so let's we'll we'll, we'll say this is chair quorum and get started All right, more officially for the recording. Uh, hello, hello, everyone. Today is July 16th. This is a CNCF uh, SIG contributor strategy meeting. It's a meeting that is recorded and available on the internet. So please be mindful of what you say and do. Please be sure to adhere to the CNCF code of conduct and uh, in general, just be awesome people. Um, so we've got a few things on the agenda and it looks like they're all uh, they're all working group or sub project the updates. Um, so who is handling the project template update? Is it the new repo that was just created? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I can tell you what Paris told me yesterday, but <laughs> <laughs> which was that she made it to put stuff in there and we should find stuff. Let's let's find stuff. We don't want to just throw things in. Um, the idea was that we would generate unique things that came out of our working groups. Uh, one of the biggest working groups that would be creating this is governance and contributor growth. 
Um, so instead of just adopting things out of say Kubernetes or something like that is it would like where we've created the uh, contributing guide. Uh, so I finally have a place to put that. Um, we're working on a contribution ladder right now as well. And I know governance, Josh is in here, but um, they're, they're working on uh, similar things that would go in that um, template repo as well. Um, so we would, we would look at other repos like uh, Kubernetes or Helm or what, like in and out of the CNCF as uh, examples. And then we use that to kind of come up with something uh, usually unique and composite out of multiples that also include our own best practices and suggestions and advice. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Kind of grab and go, bootstrap yourself, get started. Yeah. Um, so one thing I would say is that we will want to flip this on as a template repo. Um, right now, it doesn't look like it is. And for um, so there's like a checkbox in the in the settings for people who have admin access um, to to allow people to not have to clone the repo but use it as a template instead. Um, and then we as contributor strategy are probably gonna want uh, elevated permissions here, um, right admin. Um, this is a CNCF contribute repo? Sorry, what? No. Which, which repo is this talking about? The project template repo. Cool. Um, are there specific things, Carolyn, that like y'all want help with? Cause like, I know Paris and I were talking yesterday about, um, at least for some other stuff that I'm working on, like um, looking at some other, you know, examples for other projects and kind of what they might be doing. Um, so are, as part of that, like, is it helpful if we find other things and use it to create new stuff or um, do y'all have stuff already? We really, you know, what Josh did, which was great, was he laid out like a forward thinking what's all the different content that governance eventually needs to make um mm -hmm. i want to do the same thing on tuesday with uh contributor growth right now we're working on the contributing guide and the contribution ladder um but we haven't made it like a full list of everything so that people could start to just think about examples in the community and start collecting them um mm -hmm. so on tuesday uh we're going to make that list of everything that we're eventually going to want to create and put into that repo. But I don't have it. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's totally, I'm just, um, I'm one of the, I have a lot of tabs open of things that I'm like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> Let me copy paste this and bring it over. So I'll yeah. just keep that open until Tuesday. <laughs> so there's also a, um, I think it's like a community health uh, check that is on the GitHub repos um, where it can check if you have like, do you have a readme? Do you have a contributor guide? Do you have contributor guidelines? Do you have like security policy in place? And if we make the repo have all the check boxes then people can kind of grab and go and, and be yeah. checked off in multiple places. Um, this is something kind of uh, is relevant to me like as a new DEX maintainer um, too. One of the things that I, um, came to mind was a website, right? Like when you get started, like you don't necessarily have a website. Um, so I pasted in the um, chat, the CNCF Hugo Netlify starter as well. And that's one of their grab and go templates that you can use to just bootstrap a repo really quickly, uh, bootstrap a website really quickly. Agreed, that's awesome. One other suggestion, um, maybe I'll PR it into the uh, project template repo, um, is one thing I think we added to some of the build packs repos. Um, when you file an issue, so you're able to create settings um, with like uh, GitHub Actions, that you can have like different templates for what the um, what the, the issue should look like. And amongst them, you can also have a link to something else. <clears throat> So we had a, um, we posted in like a, feel free to reach out to us on Slack and then had a link to our, the build pack Slack on it, um, which I thought was kind of a useful way of 
making pe people are free to file issues, but they can also just reach out to us on Slack instead of doing that. And we can try and help them faster. Um, I don't know if that's like overly like involved the, or not. Are you talking like the contact us on the README or? Exactly, uh, not, not in the README. When you file like uh, with issues specifically. Um, yeah. See if, oh, the issue templates. Yeah, issue templates. So you can yeah. do it that, yeah. that there are also like random links. Yeah, we have that on the list and is part of the to do as well. Issue and uh, PR templates, um, like various ones for um, enhancements, questions, um, bugs, stuff like that. Yeah. Make, make that note though. But also, yes, PR is welcome if you already have ideas um, that people can start reviewing. That'd be cool. Yeah, I mean, other templates that would be cool would be like PR workflows and um, yeah, I, yeah, cheat kind, kind of, of situation. Yeah, exactly, contributor guide, cheat sheets. Um, Do we want to? Um, oh, there's a lot of them. What was Do that? we want to iterate? Sorry, do we want to iterate on the templates um, in one of our own repositories for contributor strategy before we promote things to the templates directory for the CNCF? That, that is the plan that okay. things don't go directly to the, the template repo, that we iterate them, iterate on them in the working groups first. Cool. Um, yeah. So I'm, I'm if, if you want to add things, I'm like taking the links that you're putting in chat and putting them in the agenda so we don't lose them after the end of the meeting. Um, but if I'm if I'm missing one, please link them in there. Um, and I'll get these, made sure that we're talking about them in the working group. Um, but the plan is on Tuesday, we're going to go through and make a big list of all the content and stuff like that. And then maybe break out in individual issues and get people thinking about these asynchronously so we can have multiple people working on these um, and say like iterating on the issue PR or the template PR or PR templates or start a website, things like that. So we can have lots of people uh, working because there's a lot of surface area for these. Um, Paris, I thought you mentioned one though, and I don't think I caught it. The I wrote, I wrote some of that. I wrote some stuff down in the notes. Communic I said communication MD PR workflow slash lifecycle, whatever people call it there, and contributor cheat sheets, which is kind of just a TLDR of your contributor guide, really. Okay. Um, has anyone involved uh, chatted with Ehor at all? Um, I know he was working on a revision of uh, CNCF Contribute, which may have some overlap with some of the content that may end up living in the template project. So, my first, go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, originally we were talking about putting these in Contribute, um, but then when I started opening up an issue and discussing this, I got feedback, overwhelming feedback from everyone that this was not the right place for it. And that's what inspired making Project Template and doing it separately. Uh, the concern was, was that um, Contribute was really for new contributors coming to um, CNCF and looking for a project and where to contribute and what are the, like, the norms and how to do it and everything. Um, and then this, the type of content we were looking to add was really more for maintainers uh, trying to get set up and, and, and uh, either learn how to do things or the templates and everything. And having the both in there, they didn't want to have it all mixed and matched. And additionally, we wanted it to be a template repo where you could just clone it and go. So that's why we ended up making the, the second repo. Yeah, that totally makes sense. I would not argue, but say that con 
maintainers are also contributors. So I think that at least on the CNCF level, there should be some sort of how to get started as a maintainer. Um, and maybe that lives in our, um, maybe that lives in our uh, contributor strategy repo instead. Or does it live in contribute? Does it live in contributor strategy? Who knows? I think the guidance is you should be a contributor before you should be a maintainer, right? What I'm referring- Get started like making that transition and, and supporting the projects. I think that's um, what you're right. yeah. yeah, yeah. So like, hey, we just got, you just got added to the CNCF as a sandbox incubating project, right? Like what to do first, right? How do you, how do you be an effective maintainer? As a, how do you be an effective maintainer of a CNCF project as opposed to just a maintainer of the project that you were on before? Yeah, no, I think that's great. Cool. So do we have like milestone dates for um, that kickoff that we want to drop in the notes? Which kickoff exactly? For this template project discussions and stuff. I know it's kind of already in progress, but for people who are coming to read the notes later and want to get involved too. Oh, okay. I think a lot of this is going to be driven from the contributor growth working group. Gotcha. So I think they should just come to the, the meeting next week on Tuesday. Cool. Um, I can send out a, a, a thing in the mailing list today. Sweet. And invite people, let them know that this is something that we're going to be starting to look at more. And then we're going to be making, I'm kind of a content grocery list um and kind of just so that like more people can can work on it simultaneously um but i think we haven't i haven't done a good job of making that easier for everyone to work on yeah having that for governance was really helpful for getting yeah. started that was a great idea Are we good to start talking about the maintainer circle? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think we need to like get a gif of that because that's amazing. <laughs> um, maybe first we can really talk about uh, per quick yeah, words. Uh, uh, maybe first we can quickly talk about the um, the uh, TSC update. Um, or wait, Josh, did Josh give it or did you give it Varys? I did it. Okay, cool. Do you want a copy of it in the notes? Uh, so we have the, so I know we have the slides and just did we get any specific feedback or? Everybody loved it. They said, great work. See you later. So. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to leave. I'm gonna leave. <laughs> Easy peasy. Yeah. That was, that was the summary. So. Well, Aria has opinions about that, Paris. <laughs> yeah, TLDR, they believe in our mission and everything that we're working on is important and amazing. That was, that was it.
we're still in that super, yeah, we're still in that super new state where we haven't given anybody grief yet. So <laughs> the org question. So that's good. Soon, soon. Just wait till they hear about the governance stuff. No. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, cool. You want to do maintainer circle? Um, oh, Karen dropped. Dang it. She probably had a conflict at 11. Um, so Karen and I met um, last week. Uh, what we talked about was how much pretty much timing sucks on this for launch because um, obviously KubeCon Europe um, is going off in August, mid-August. We don't have a slot there. There's no slots there for us to launch this, um, which means that we, if we were to launch in August, we would be competing with most of the events going on uh, and um, people would not like that. So that leaves us with September, which just seems so far, um, at least to me anyway, to try to launch something and still maintain the momentum of the newness of this group. Um, so I, f I fret that we need to figure out something to launch and some, like it's outside of just like a Slack channel. Um, the other thing that we talked about was how some people still don't identify with the word maintainer. The goal of the group is to grow maintainers and support them. So people like official reviewers would be included in this as well. But some reviewers, for instance, don't say that they're maintainers. Um, so we were kind of stuck on that. Uh, and I also heard feedback from other people that we should probably get a new word. Um, so that leaves us kind of with this. We know what we want to do. We know the goals. We now know the composition of like the first three meetings. We know the topic of those meetings. Um, we've got our communication channels. <laughs> now we need a name. <laughs> And now we need a time. So that's the, the kind of TLDR of where we are right now. I mean, in a minute, it might be unicorns.leadership.cncf. Like, that's, I'm just, in a minute, like, seconded, I don't know. Seconded, let's do it. <laughs> I'm just going to make up a word, and then everybody's going to be like, sounds like a great word. <laughs> I don't know. So what's everybody's thoughts on timing and or naming and or something else, by the way? I, I don't have a solid name, but I know one thing that maybe resonates more with people in the Kubernetes community is the concept of chop wood, carry water. And whether you're a maintainer or a, a reviewer, I think you do maybe associate more with that concept. And if we could find something that maybe links in with that, we could find a cute name that more people associate with. Um, but I don't have a name that goes with that yet. It just kind of came from me right now. But I like unicorns too, and that's damn cute. So, um, I also AB tested the, the just the term leadership circle. Um, a lot of people also did not think that they were a leader because they're not on a steering committee or something, which is weird because we're not leaders either. Sorry. Um, no, just kidding. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I've been like testing out some different words. Um, and then if, if we call them owners, which is Kubernetes, then that obviously alienates 45 projects that don't have owners. So it's like, hang what do on, we do here? hang on. There's something there because we could not necessarily correlate it to Kubernetes, but correlate it to the idea of ownership of code, right? So GitHub has the, the code owners concept, right? And Kubernetes is kind of a, an exploded version of that, right? So I think I think code owners does fit. Um, Would we exclude it, doc owners and or community owners? So I, th so I think of, when I think of code, I think of anything that it gets committed to a repo, regardless of what we consider the content to be. Um, but not everyone has that feeling right yeah. i agree and i was going to also say that that not all, everybody that has that feeling also yeah like sure. kubernetes we explicitly we explicitly uh separate it out as as non-code contributors right so um naming is hard 
<laughs> yes. And I'm like, that's why I'm just like, there's going to be a minute where I'm just going to flip the table and it's going to be unicorns, everybody. <laughs> just like, like, I mean, you have awesome I, stickers. Because so. I'm just like, I want to launch this inclusive language discussion. Like, I want to like, I want to get us there, right? Like, I just feel blocked in this, like the naming conventions and then the- Oh, here's my experience about naming is that when you name something, no one will like it. And it doesn't matter what name you pick, no one will like it. Nobody liked the name Google when they first launched. The iPad got all kinds of bad press. I think you pick something that seems reasonable, you go with it, and people will, people will get used to it. Don, tell me though. Also, me I don't do naming, because this is why, but. Yeah, give me a I, suggestion, Don. Give me a did, did, did we already try Master Circle? <laughs> oh yeah, that you, would definitely you, flow. That, well. that, would, that would flow really well. Don, I would honestly, I would go with maintainer circle and just be clear about the definition that it's, it's for reviewers, it's for approvers, it's for owners, it's for, um, yeah. but no matter what you pick people or leadership circle, I mean, I would, I would honestly, I would go with one of those because I think coming up with something crazy is going to be even, even worse. All right. So, so I, I like shipping with maintainer circle as well. I would say, let's not let the naming of something uh, prevent us actually doing the thing. Um, the Ultimately, we'll probably find a different name or people will fall into love with it eventually. Um, but we... <laughs> <laughs> She's like, I've done surveys and calculations. Um, but what I kind of don't dig about leadership is like some people specifically don't want to be in leadership. Right. Like yeah. they can, I, I feel like they can sooner get on board with the idea of like owning code and maintaining code. Right. Um, or owning content and maintaining content as opposed to, I have to lead a thing. I have to run a meeting. I have to, you know, like there, um, you know, uh, additional responsibilities implied with, uh, with leadership. Right? So. At the same time, I feel like with the recent discussion on like, master slave mentality i feel like ownership is also could be a touchy word mm. not necessarily but like i could see you know people getting like flared up about it even though there's obviously no like there's no not necessarily any um insinuation there on that and um yeah but this is mo this is mainly it had um i don't know something about growth as well like if this is a group for people who are trying to um to uh, contribute to and to grow their products, no? This would be a group that would be trying to contribute to themselves and grow each other. So for instance, like how to be a better code reviewer, how to not burn out, how to include inclusive language in your project, how to combat unconscious bias. Um, that's the, I feel like the goals in like small, small maintainer groups where it's like focused on peers and peer mentoring and group mentoring and things like that. Um, naming y'all. <laughs> I, I agree. Like just call it what you originally had said to call it. And, you know, and, and we'll it can change it as it progresses, but like, Right. You know, I certainly agree with Dawn. Like, there's always going to be people that don't think it's the right one. And then together we can come up with something new. And then what about the my timing debacle or timing debacle here where it's like, how do we, because like the planning for this is going to take Karen and I like to launch like from you know, to launch kind of this birds of a feathery, not serious first session and then launch the second session, which is technically the first with like the inclusive language pit with the inclusive language bit. We're talking like probably three to four weeks of planning all of those things. Um, but again, that's when it's like, that's why it's like if we started that now, we would be budding up literally in the middle of KubeCon and competing with KubeCon. So september is a great time to launch like everyone's on vacation in august and like now is i don't know half people i know are burnt out and like i don't know what's wrong with september give yourself time to plan and do it 
Yeah, I guess I just didn't want to dim the light, I guess. Yeah, but no one is sitting here waiting for us to deliver right now. Like, there's no ticking clock. Yeah. Well, I, I also think, like, it's a little different than if KubeCon was in person in terms of it becoming this all-consuming, everybody's only focused on that. Since it's virtual this year, like, I think it's less of a, you know, you're not traveling, you're not, you know, we're not getting to hang out with each other and have fun, so <laughs> we right. have no choice but to sit in front of our computers and look at updates. That's so. another meeting, right? <laughs> it's kind. Of, it's. I mean, yeah, you're you're totally right. And you know, it's the talking with the chairs and Nancy about this stuff. It's like it feels like another meeting. Like there's no physically going to a place and blocking off time in the workday. Like you're still going to be doing other stuff. Uh, you know, it's it's. Um, yeah, I. I don't know. I I'm fine with waiting personally. Um, All right, but well, Parasite, we'll do, I, we'll launch with maintainer circle, wait for the, I'll duck and we'll do September. Um, the other thing that we talked about that I actually don't want to necessarily take the time on now because I want, I'd rather file the issue first, but I think that if we redid maintainers.cncf.io into an actual site, that could be useful. Like we could link to things like the project templates and like the events that we're going to host for maintainers and like everything. Because right now it's just the spreadsheet of who can vote for TOC people. Mm -hmm. um, I think that would give folks an identity and um, not even necessarily identity, but just also just give us somewhere to host the stuff that's not necessarily a GitHub as well. And like maybe we could even like feature maintainers, like maintainer profiles, like. I don't know. That was just an idea that I had. I'd rather file an issue, but wanted to get general kind of like good, bad, ugly feels on that yeah. kind of an idea. Yeah. <laughs> no, I, when I when I see the spreadsheet, I think of um, I think YAML. I think uh, Parabol. <laughs> no, I, I think Parabolus, right? So you know what we use for for Kubernetes to maintain groups, right? In general, right? For for GitHub orgs, but also like the k you know the kkates.io stuff where we maintain uh you know in maintain email membership or group membership by by yaml right like the maintainers should not have to necessarily be uh something that amy has to update right uh, of the, any anyone who has you know anyone who can add an entry to a YAML file should be able to go in and 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 drop an update and then we slurp that into whatever site ends up getting put up. Um, yep. I like the idea. Yeah. yeah, and I also think like you know as CNCF takes on more projects, like this spreadsheet just becomes unwieldy pretty quickly. Um, and so you know it'd be great to have it be something that you could easily filter by like sandbox projects and graduated and all that and then get to like what you're really looking for. Cause this is a lot, it's a pretty rainbow, but it's a lot. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, so cool. All right. I'll write an issue and do the whole kick the boodle for it, but I just want to take like a pulse check of please don't go down this line or please do. So I'm going to keep on trucking. So that's the, that's the end of maintainers here. Go. Maybe you should just call it kitten caboodle. I like that. I just picture little kittens. Move on to the next update. Um, we actually already talked about contributor growth when we talked about the project templates. Um, We've pretty much finished the contributing guide. So I will submit that finally because we have the project template uh, repo now. Um, so that's really all I have to say about that. We're going to start working on the ladder next. And then we'll kick off um, making a big grocery list of content. And we're going to start working on next in crowdsourcing. So let's move on to governance. Woohoo! Oh, do we still have you? You're connecting twice. 
multiple seasons. Oh my gosh, so Steven Frozen he loaned himself. That smile. That that's like the best frozen state I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly. <laughs> that should actually be his new avatar. <laughs> I, think, I think we've got a headshot. Yeah. yeah, I think we've got a headshot. Honestly. <laughs> well, take it, make sure you take a screenshot of it, so so yeah, my um my computer fell apart. Tabs are Basil or something running, um. So I'm on my phone right now. Hilarious. <laughs> Darn computers. Computers are hard. Don, why don't you give us an update on what you've been working on? Yeah, sure. So so Josh put together the uh, tracking issue, which had a big laundry list of the types of content that we need for governance. And there's lots of it that actually kind of overlaps with contributor growth. So I think there are some bits that uh, some of the people who are working in both of those working groups are, are focused on. Um, I took leadership selection for governance just uh, as something that was relatively standalone and I put together a, a draft. So if you wanna have a look at it, edit it, leave some, some feedback, that would, be, that would be cool. It's just, uh, I put some thoughts down, so it's probably I don't know how long we wanted these to be, so I felt like I didn't want to go overboard. Um, so it probably needs a bit more detail in some places, so so have at it. Um, yeah, I think that was most of what we talked about in the governance working group, wasn't it? I think this is good, Dawn. I know, Thanks. I mean, as far as like length and stuff that you were concerned about. I wonder, reading it too, I wonder if it would be um, cool to also include other projects that aren't cloud native in some of the examples. Yeah, I wasn't sure about that. I tried to use examples of graduated oh. cloud native projects because I figured there wouldn't be really yeah, any yeah. controversy because they were sort of blessed by the CNCF in one way or another as graduated projects. Mm -hmm. um, but if we think there are other like really good examples of any of those uh, any of those areas, or if there's maybe an area that's more commonly used in another type of foundation that isn't really as represented in the CNCF, maybe we'd want to add an area and use some other examples. Yeah. But yeah, have a think about I mean, it. Like I said, it's you know if people want to add stuff to it or add add comments, that'd be cool. I figure we can talk about it in the next governance working group in more detail. Cool. Any questions for Dawn? While well, Steven's basiling? <laughs> <laughs> uh, great job. <laughs> it's not a question, it's more of a comment. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh, I was about to moderate. I was about to look at the <laughs> Honestly, like I was on another tab and I was like about to click on the who's in, who just came in as the participant. Anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, we have fun here. Don, I do have a question. Yeah. Um, is this something that will feed into eventually a governance.md for our template? Repo? Uh, no. Uh, no, I don't think so. Because okay. this is more like a bunch of options that you could you could pick, but you'd kind of want to pick one and then go with it. Um, we should definitely add governance.md to that list if Josh hasn't added it, though, because that is one of the like big ones that we've not necessarily talked about from a template perspective as well. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Do you want to make it a template though, or just a list of like, here's some examples of models you might consider or whatever. So like just, I, what we did, um, what I think is helpful is sometimes your template just needs to have a bunch of comments that walks you through. These are the required things you need to have. And here are some of the optional things you need to have. And we may link to documents like this one 
-hmm. where we go, you need to make this decision. Here are some things you need, you, you can look at, and then you should paste one of these in here and go, this is what you're going to use. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so and and I do think that you can immediately use, but it's like a, you know, a, a paint by numbers. And you can't <laughs> I do think it'd be useful to have a governance.md template because there are some common things that everything should have. So like, what is your decision-making criteria? That should be in your governance document. What, how are maintainers selected? How is your, you know, I don't know, leadership selected or something. I think we should at least have some categories and then links out to documents that will help them make those decisions. Exactly. Charter templates. That was an, that's another one. Thank you. What did you say? Charter templates. Oh uh, Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Great. Now I'm actually taking notes. Is someone editing this issue or is it okay if I just edit that and add those in? Feel free to edit. Yeah. Go for it. I'll just I'll just put those in the charter template and the governance.md into here so that we remember. Um the other governance stuff that's not on the agenda, but just needs to bubble up for everyone, just in case, just to like keep everybody on the same page, is the multi-org stuff, um, is the um, the steering committee guidance that we gave to the TOC. Um, we did not give that during the meeting, though, so that's why if we if we gave that during the meeting, we probably would have had a different response of "Great, job, see you later." Um, <laughs> um, uh, I think. Uh, uh, a lot of folks had issue with it. A lot of folks agreed with us. Um, it feels like there's a lot of division. Um, I don't know what everybody else's thoughts were on, on the response. Um, but discuss. <laughs> um, should we follow up, I guess? Um, I mean, I think it... I, I, we said we made a recommendation to the TOC, but it's it's correct that like they can ignore that, right? Really? Yeah, yeah, for sure. So I guess that when we talk about like next steps, it's kind of like they're still having you know the conversation. So it's kind of a I don't know what is our next step other than you know like we said we don't think this is the way to go. Um, I guess we're on the we said what we said approach. I, I just don't know. I don't know what, yeah. you know, I know there's still, I know personally, um, I was going to respond to the thread to just get a little more um, clarification from the last um, question was like Matt talking about continuity details. And I'm just kind of curious as to like what, what he's envisioning there when he's thinking of, you know, continuity and how a project would how would a project make its own continuity plan when you're trying, when you're looking at a scenario where the current maintainers are no longer maintaining the project, if that makes sense. <laughs> um, and so that's why I'm trying to get a feel for like what exactly he's trying to get to there. Um, and I think, I think it all comes back to like, you know, there's still a lot of open questions about what exactly, um, they're trying to get at because I liked, um, you know, like uh, Dems had pointed out the the tagging aspect and like, is it something that is, is, is it, is it something as simple as, you know, saying like these projects have this kind of a, you know, maintainership and you as an end user should know what that means and how that could impact your implementation or your use of this project. And is that enough or is it more that the TOC is trying to get at? So. I wonder if we should go ahead and jumpstart some work around the tagging stuff that Dim's laid out and yeah. defining some of that too. Um, because that could be a good, that could be a good next goal for the next TOC meeting, which isn't this next Tuesday, but it's the following Tuesday. So we could present like, Hey, we've evolved. Kind of. Here's some. Here's yeah. some badging that might help with some of that. Hold on. Yeah, and I also think it's a good kind of like there's that education piece that we could be doing for, you know, CNCF members, end users, people who are just interested in the cloud native space in general, of like, 
well, it, it actually applies beyond cloud native. <laughs> it's kind of like all open source. So like when we say a project is single maintainer, multi-org maintainer, whatever, like kind of what that means. And, um, you know, there's considerations that you should think through before you adopt this particular project. Um, I mean, ultimately, it's open source, right? So like if somebody, if I use something and a maintainer just decides like, I'm out of here, like I can always still get the code, but it's just an understanding of like, you know, unless you're willing to do it yourself at that point, no more features are coming. <laughs> so I think we just need to make that, you know, clear and kind of educate folks on what the expectation should be. And I think that's a, a good thing to have no matter what happens with the graduation aspect. I think it's a good education avenue that CNCF can do. So I'm happy to help with that and take that if Great. I can work with you on that, if that's helpful. Yep. All right. And anybody else have anything for governance that they're working on? Looking at the time, we have less than one minute. Speak quickly. Anything governance? There's lots to do there. All right. And the next thing is just approving a PR. It's our only outstanding PR. It's where we can put our resources and our links. Uh, and what we find, I just pre-populated it with just a few so you can see where I was going with this. That's just, this is actually not all of the, I have probably a lot more links than this to add. Um, this is just something that I thought would be helpful and useful to the group. Um, so if someone could give me a review on that, but that does not need to be live on this call. There's also going to be a charter revision going in. Um, today and that charter revision is going to take away everything that we've bootstrapped from the roadmap uh, add in a lot of the stuff that we've already talked about today uh, also add in Stephen as chair um, and do a couple of uh, other housekeeping bits uh, of course we're going to do the charter revision route which is to get it approved by TOC as well um, so this is this will just be the first steps of review um, and I'll mail that out to the mailing list. But nothing dramatic is going to be changing. It's just, now that we're out of bootstrap stage, um, updating that pretty much. And that's it for us. Questions, concerns, wanna jump in? Nothing? Go team. Good, it's 7.30 here, so I'm ready to Yes. Dinner. Yeah. Mm, dinner. Tell me what's for dinner, Don. <laughs> we are having leftover spicy Korean food, mm. which we refer to as space melty because it's it's homemade and it's super spicy. I, That's amazing. <laughs> lots of the gokujang paste. <laughs> lots. You're, you're after my heart now. <laughs> All right, y'all. See you on the flip side Tuesday, right? For contributor growth, I think it is. And then next Thursday after that. See y'all. Yeah. Bye-bye. Thank you for having me. Yeah, thanks for coming. <laughs>